These are times rappers got their ops lacking on live. And let's start things with K Flock. Because before YG member Rajiz passed away, he and K Flock were known for beefing with each other on IG Lives. You never did nothing to me. You never even, bro, this that was my first time. Bro, yeah, chat. You never did nothing to me, though. But Gay Flock eventually got tired of going back and forth with Ra on live. So one day, Gay Flock went live on IG, showing everyone that he was spinning on Ra G's block. He even got up with Ra and claimed that Ra didn't want the smoke. Boy, dick, I'm trying to spin. Look how comfortable I am on this block. I'm all in there. So it's about to get lit. <laughs> Grab their basketballs or leave. <laughs> Not long after the alleged incident, Rajiz went live on IG and told K Flock to pull back up, claiming he never saw him and was ready for whatever. Somebody tag K Flock. Somebody tag K Flock. Nah, play him, come right back. Outside right now, as we speak. You coming through hard and all live, block off your lives, can't see your shit. Like, what's up? Pop out. And not long after that incident, another video came out of some of K Flock's goons chasing Rajiz in the streets. Hey, Ray, Ray. Right way! <laughs> we got a runner! K Flock also dissed Ra after the situation in his song, Power, saying, Ra Ra, he saw me, he ain't let it clap. Once Ra heard the diss, he responded to K Flock in his song, Real Facts, and said, Hey, yo, KK, now let's talk the facts. Anytime that they threw, I threw back. Basically letting it be known that anytime someone sent shots at him, he sent them right back their way. But unfortunately, Rajiz would end up passing just a few weeks later while getting into an Uber. On July 11th, 2021, the rapper was headed to the studio when two men on scooters pulled up on him and started blowing at him. The whole thing was captured on his Uber driver's dash cam, and the footage quickly went viral on social media. But that wasn't the only time K Flock caught one of his ops on live, because another incident went viral when he was sprinting through the YG's hood and caught one of their members lacking and pressed him on live. Hell, what? That was Gunner. That was Gunner. It was Gunner. Oh, why? What? Oh, why? I slapped the sh you. Tell him why. Tell him, I said, suck my. You heard? Hell, you heard? Tell them that suck my Don't run. Right there. Don't run. 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 Don't since they couldn't hop out of the car in time, so no one was harmed in this clip. But K Flock isn't the only New York rapper who caught one of his ops lacking on live because Shai K ended up catching a dude that was dissing his gang after he got out of school and he pressed him on live. You want to go screaming Ewok? Top one. You want to go screaming Ewok? Screaming Ewok? Grab him! Grab him! Grab him! Shai K also appeared in a Vice documentary. During the documentary, they caught him cashing one of his ops, L.A. Sav, outside a courtroom while in front of police. Stop running! Yo, stop running! Shai K and all of his crew just ran after this boy, and next thing you know, police come out from nowhere. And I'll fucking see me, suck my and fans were shocked about the situation since they did it in front of the police. But Shai K explained how things went down in an interview with Cam Capone News, saying that's normal where he's from. Everybody catching cases, so everybody getting the same court date, and you don't even know. So once you go there, you see one of your ups. Be posting, wish me good luck at court. Once you post that. <laughs> Oh, boom, ring the courthouse. Once you do that, our block is right there, so. But that's nothing compared to when KTS Dre got some of G Herbo's homies lacking inside McDonald's. KTS was known for beefing with NLMB, and the beef between the two gangs started after the death of an affiliate named Paris Bassett, aka Lil Pez. Pez died back in March 2008. Pez wasn't a confirmed member of KTS, but he was one from their neighborhood, and many people there loved him. So his death hit them hard. No one was ever arrested for his death, but KTS believed that NLMB was responsible for it. So after that, it was an all-out war, and KTS Dre and his brother Vaughn started applying pressure to NLMB. And one day, Dre and Vaughn were sliding in NLMB's territory and pressed several members who were hanging out at a McDonald's. Y'all ain't gotta go nowhere, we finna get some McDonald's before we ain't on there with y'all. Y'all good? These no limbs, man. These are no limbs. 
Why you back there? It'll work here. Where you going? It'll work here. The NLMB members weren't expecting to see their ops, and KTS Dre would end up smacking up NLMB Cairo while recording the whole thing on video. Dre tried to get Cairo to say, Rock, a dead member of NLMB. Why not? Say, Rock. But Cairo refused to say that, and not long after, the security guard in McDonald's would make all the guys exit the building. As soon as KTS Dre and his homies left the McDonald's, you could hear someone bussing in the background. Cairo later confronted Dre on Instagram Live, proving he wasn't scared. You ran a lot of times. Bro, who? Time, I didn't man. have I ever ran from you. Have you ran from me before? Hell no. Nah. On what? I never on ran. What? Put that I down. only seen you one, one time. time. I only sent you one time in person. And that was that day, and I ain't even run that day. And after all the drama in the streets, KTS Dre ended up getting arrested for a gun charge and would have to spend the next three years behind bars. And not long after doing that bid, he was in and out of jail for the next few years. And Dre's fiance would end up binding him. As he was released, he was met by his fiance and his grandmother. And together, they left Cook County Jail and headed towards the car. But as they exited the jail, two cars pulled up and several gunmen hopped out. They all started firing, showering Dre and his people with rounds. His grandmother was hit in the knee, and an innocent bystander was also grazed. But Dre ended up getting hit a total of 64 times, and passed away almost immediately at just 31 years old. And no one has been arrested for his death. Many fans believe it's the work of NLMB, but no one knows if that's true or not. Lil Migo also had a situation with his op, but he wasn't the one pressing him because in December 2022, Memphis comedian Grove Hero spotted CMG rapper Lil Migo in the airport and pressed him since Lil Migo was talking disrespectful about Dolph after he passed. You Migo? Ah, the beach ho Hey, what you wanna do? Come out here. Shake. Come on, don't be trying to call your partners, bro. It's just me and you on by myself. Shake. Grove ended up smacking Lil Migo, and he walked away before Migo had the chance to do anything. The situation instantly went viral, and Lil Migo tried to clear things up with a Facebook post saying, This smacked the phone out my hand and ran a four flat. Soon I pulled my pants up. He was letting everyone know he didn't have the chance to do anything. But after that post, Grove uploaded a video on the gram showing that he hit more than just the phone. Why you lying, me go? I hit the phone? Well, why you twisted? Why your body twisted? Why is your body twisted if I hit your phone? And then you said I ran to the police. Why would I run to the police, bro, when I sprung on you? That's crazy. Fix your lies, little me go. Fix your lies. Stand on that CMG being and all that shit we talk. Grove Hero also discussed the situation in an interview with Dirty Glove. So when we walking, he pulls his phone out and start recording me as if I'm running from him. So that's why I, I never was finna pull my phone out no more. He pulled his phone out like, look, this is running. He running, y'all. Look, he running. I'm like, I know it well. I ain't running. I'm trying to walk you outside so we can jack. Subscribe right quick before we go on. But now, let's talk about GBL Gaston because he's an LA rapper known for dissing people for clout. After Nipsey passed, he started claiming that it was his body. Gaston originally came up as a gaming YouTuber, but he started going crazy on social media, chasing clout and trying to act hard. He threatened dudes like Crip Mac on IG Live before. There's even one video that surfaced that shows him blowing at one of his ops while they were on IG Live with each other. Where's God, damn it? He shot and he missed. <laughs> The dude wasn't phased by what GBO Gaston did, since he knew Gaston isn't really about that action. And after all, the clout chasing videos started going around showing what Gaston is like when he's not filming. Because one dude spotted him in the street and made him run inside the police station. In another clip, a dude made Gaston apologize for all the clout chasing and disrespectful things he was saying. Yeah, don't be dissing this, my nigga. Diss the gang of I know, my nigga. That's the piece of all the Say sorry, bro. I'm sorry, bro. Hopefully, Gaston chills out and goes back to gaming videos before things get too out of hand. Freshy the General is an up-and-coming New York drill rapper, and with him being a drill rapper, he's into it with a lot of different sets. So one day, Freshy and his bros were just chilling on the block, dancing, and listening to some music while on IG Live, until one of his mans noticed someone unusual past the block. So once they noticed who it was, Freshy and his boys instantly started trying to chase the dude down. It's a good day. I saw the record. We had the show. No, 
That's Quay! Yo, we on it! What about what? The dude they were chasing was too quick and ended up getting away since he was riding a dirt bike. And not long after this incident, New York rapper OMB JD and his group ended up catching Freshy lacking while inside a cab. And unfortunately, they roughed him up a little. OMB JD also explained on an IG Live video that Freshy was crying to the cab driver. Again, calm as a put him in the cab. I got the real video, no fake video. You beat the shit out. Yeah, he was crying. He was crying to the cab driver. Which I got that video. He was crying to the cab driver. Then we gave him wedgie. We gave him oh, wedgie. wedgie. We put him up to the crowd. <laughs> they did Freshie pretty badly. And after the incident, Freshie was posting videos on Instagram. And you could see that he got did bad. But thankfully, things didn't get too out of hand in this situation. But now let's move on to Matt Critter, who recently signed to Gucci Mane's 1017 label. And Matt getting booked for murder made fans speculate that Gucci's label is cursed. Because on December 21st, 2022, the Memphis police received a call about an incident on Wells Avenue. And once the police arrived on the scene, they found a man unresponsive in a vacant lot. By the time the ambulance arrived, the victim was identified as Markeith Taylor and was pronounced dead with multiple wounds. Two hours before Markeith's death, a man in the crowd that was overlooking the crime scene opened fire at a passing car and ended up hitting the driver. The shooter then got into his car and drove off. Officers would locate the vehicle that got hit up a few miles away with Alandis Turner inside of it. Alandis' family later revealed that he was related to the other man that died that same day. One witness at the crime scene claimed to have seen the murder of Markeith and told investigators that Matt Critter and three other dudes he was with were the ones that took Markeith out. And according to the witness, Mac called out to the victim and told him to get out of his car and come to them. Markeith listened, and as he walked up to the four men, they began walking toward him as all four drew down on Markeith and started firing. The witness said the four men returned to the SUV they were in and then drove off. The witness also identified Mac Critter, Gary Taylor, and Ontario Owens from a picture an investigator showed them. And days before the crime took place, Mac Critter was seen on live letting everyone know that he was going to crash out while searching for his ops. I'm out here! I'm in traffic! I'm trying to buy this song! I'm trying to put something under! I'm trying to put me a man under! I'm dropping out, I'm dropping out bare face with this And Matt Critter is currently out of jail since they gave him a bond and all the details about the case aren't public. So no one knows 100% if Matt Critter was involved in this situation. And click this video to see the most disrespectful rap lyrics that really happened.